Yesterday, we talked about swedges, so today it is only logical that we talk about their opposite, which means fullers. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge and the tool of the day. Swedges, of course, are depressions or concavities, and fullers, therefore, are the opposite. They are convex in shape. They're half rounds or V's or whatever. A fuller forges a depression in something and can be used for forging grooves or, or various things of that nature. And they come in different sizes and different shapes, just like swedges did. So fullers are often used in pairs, just like swedges would be used in pairs. And there would be a top tool and a bottom tool that would work together to create a lengthwise groove or a crosswise groove, either for an accent or some other purpose. And we've used various spring fullers and fullering tools and fullers and butcher tools for quite a few different things as we've made various projects. But this is the traditional way fullers looked. When you have a striker in the shop all the time, and most old shops did, this is what makes the most sense. Since most of us don't have that, we go to the fullering jigs and the guillotine tools and the spring dies and things like that. But typically this is how you would use a set of fullers. That doesn't mean that's the only way they're used. Sometimes they are used in conjunction with a swedge to forge something down into the swedge to create a half round profile like a cap rail for a set of stair rails or a banister or something like that. And perhaps forging a gouge or something like that, you might need a half round. So sometimes fullers are not just used with fullers. The same holds true for a, for a V-shaped fuller and a V-shaped swedge. If you were making V-bit tongs, this is an ideal way to forge that shape. And you can put the flat jaw tong in there and forge the V-bit in very nicely because you have a matching set of tools, one a fuller and one a swedge. Typically the, the fuller is in line with the handle. That's not always the case. I had a special purpose. I wanted one the other way, so I made one that went the other way. You don't always have to, to follow the rules because they really aren't rules. They're just kind of a a common practice. If you have a reason to deviate, go ahead and deviate. These are all fullers that I made. They're all made out of 4140. That makes a very good fuller. This is a commercially made fuller, and this V fuller looks like it's probably a shop made fuller that I got used. I don't know where it was made or when. And then bottom fullers, of course, come in the same assortment and ranges of sizes and this is probably the first fuller I ever made. It's crooked, it's off center, it's made out of an old axle shaft, but you know what? It still works. And these are all store-bought fullers. They're commercially made. This is one that's fabricated. This curve is just ground in and the hardy shank is just welded on. Just like with top swedges, it's quite typical for a fuller to have handles that are loose. Again, I tend to wedge mine because I don't work with a striker and because Colorado's dry weather means my handles are often not still with the tool when I need it. But people who work with a striker all the time prefer handles that are not wedged in place because it transfers less shock to the handle and the person holding it and you're less likely to break a handle. Plus, in some instances, it is beneficial to be able to flip that head around so you, if you have a left-sided tool and a right-sided tool, you can get the benefit of both out of one tool without having to make a set. There are other fullers that are often used in the shop. I mentioned the guillotine tool, spring fullers, fullering jigs, things like that. And we've made some of those, and I'll link to perhaps the fabricated fullering jig right up here so that you can see how that works. And we'll look at a lot of those tools as part of the tool of the day just to see the variety of other fullering tools that are out there between guillotine tools, fullering jigs, spring fullers, and maybe fullers that go into the fly press when we get to fly press tools. Lots of different options. The concept is always the same. It's a uh, convex surface that makes a dent.
pretty simple. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Love it if you hit that subscribe button as always. But then get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you later.